a month later when sure snake announced a plebiscite on austrian independence hitler and defendant goering demanded the plebiscite be cancelled another ultimatum demanded sure snake resign within three hours fearing invasion sure snake resigned and finally defendant size in court was appointed the new chancellor of austria that same day goering in berlin called kepler of the german embassy in vienna the conversation was transcribed kepler spoke first well we represent the government now yes that's it you are the government listen carefully the following telegram should be sent here from size in club take the notes the provisional austrian government sends to the german government the urgent request to support it in its task to help prevent bloodshed for this purpose, it asks the German government to send German troops as soon as possible. Well, SA and SS are marching through the streets. Everything has collapsed with the professional groups. Size Import is the only one who still has power in Austria. Yes, then our troops will cross the border today. The act was written, joining Austria to Germany, and signed by defendant Size Import. Goering, Frick, von Ribbentrop, and Hess. Hitler, of course, had said, Germany neither intends nor wishes to interfere in the internal affairs of Austria, to annex Austria or to conclude an Anschluss. 21st of May, 1935, Adolf Hitler. The curtain fell on Act One, but already the Nazi conspirators prepared for Act Two, with this 1938 memorandum from Hitler to his high command. It is my unalterable decision to smash Czechoslovakia by military action in the near future. It is the job of the political leaders to bring about the politically and militarily suitable moment. Conrad Henlein was designated political leader. The plan was labeled Operation Green and defendant Yodel issued another memorandum reading, Operation Green will be set in motion by means of an incident in Czechoslovakia, which will give Germany provocation for military intervention. The fixing of the exact time for this incident is of the utmost importance. A few months later, Germany signed the Munich Pact with England, France, and Italy. This pact involved the transfer of the Sudetenland to Germany. The conspirators called it their last territorial demand. But before the ink was dry, they were making other plans. For Hitler's goal was the complete absorption of Czechoslovakia. And now the Czech president, Hasha, was called to a meeting with Hitler and defendants Goering, von Ribbentrop, and Keitel. They gave him the ultimatum. Bohemia and Moravia would be incorporated into Germany immediately, or Czechoslovakia would be invaded and Prague destroyed from the air. Pacha was helpless. Defendants von Ribbentrop and Frick signed the decree making Bohemia and Moravia a German protectorate. Speaking some months before about the Sudetenland, however, Hitler had said, I have promised and repeated here that there will be no more territorial problems for Germany and Europe. I will be no longer interested in the Czech state, and I will guarantee it. 26 September 1938, Adolf Hitler. Now, according to more of his adjutant's notes, Hitler reviewed the Nazi plan of violence and treachery from 1934 to 39. The notes read, First, rearmament. In 1935, the introduction of compulsory military service. After that, militarization of the Rhineland. One year later, Austria came. It brought about a considerable reinforcement of the Reich. The next step was Bohemia and Moravia. Then followed the erection of the protectorate, and with that, the basis for action against Poland was laid. Basically, I did not organize the armed forces in order not to strike. The decision to strike was always in me. In the name of the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland, 
Sir Hartley Shawcross presents count two, crimes against peace, charging that all the defendants participated in the planning and waging of wars of aggression, wars in violation of international treaties, agreements, and assurances. The first step was the Rhineland, and the next step was Austria. The Rhineland is occupied, Austria and Czechoslovakia are seized by Germany, and now the Nazi conspirators turn to the next problem, the conquest of Poland. Again, an adjutant, Lieutenant Colonel Schmundt, transcribed Hitler's words. The solution of the problem demands courage. It is impossible without invasion of foreign states or attacks on foreign property. There is therefore no question of sparing Poland, and we are left with the decision to attack Poland at the first suitable opportunity. We cannot expect a repetition of the Czech affair. There will be war. Meanwhile, according to their well-established practice, the conspirators stirred up the Danzig issue to furnish frontier incidents which could justify an attack on Poland. Then, on 23 August, the Nazis signed their non-aggression pact with Russia. Then Hitler told his high command, Now Poland is in the position in which I want her. I'm only afraid that at the last moment some Schweinowen will make a proposal for mediation. Appeals were made, twice by the Pope and by President Roosevelt. Finally, Mr. Roosevelt asks that assurance be given him that the German armed forces will not attack and, above all, not invade the territory or possessions of the following independent nations. He then names as those coming into question Finland, Lettland, Litauen, Estland, Norway, Sweden, Denmark, Niederlande, Belgium, Großbritannien, Irland, Frankreich, Portugal, Spanien, the Schweiz, Liechtenstein, Luxembourg, Polen. Meine Antwort! On 1 September 1939, the Nazis sent the Wehrmacht smashing into Poland and into a new world war. For France and England, faithful to their mutual assistance pact with Poland, immediately declared war on Germany. The Luftwaffe opened mass attacks on Polish towns and cities. According to Schmundt's notes, said, Destruction of Poland in the foreground. I shall give a propagandist course for starting the war, never mind whether it be plausible or not. Have no pity. Take a brutal attitude. But, as usual, before the attack on Poland, Hitler told the world, During the troubled months of the past year, the friendship between Poland and Germany has been one of the reassuring factors in the political life of Europe. 30th of January, 1939, of Hitler. The path of destruction started in Poland, but soon it led north and south across all Europe. And each new aggression was based on Hitler's principle that in war, victory, not right, is what matters. On aggression treaty, it is firmly resolved to maintain peace between Denmark and Germany in all circumstances. 31st of May, 1939, Ribbentrop. But on 9 April, 1940, German troops invaded Denmark. 